Bella here is a bit of a demand barker. And you can hear the other two dogs. We put them outside so we can work with her one-on-one. -on -one. When you're doing these sort of exercises, you have multiple dogs, it's, it's faster. Sometimes we think it'll be faster to work with all three dogs together. It's always gonna be faster to separate them. So this is a focus exercise. I'm gonna teach her how to look at my face as a way of teaching her so I can redirect her later on. If there's something, if she sees somebody outside, I wanna be able to say something, get her to stop and look at me. So when I'm doing this, I wanna be sitting down and I have my knees shoulder width apart. Uh, and I'm facing the dog with the dog sitting between my knees. I have a handful of treats in my left hand. I have one treat in my right hand. I'm a right-handed person. If you're a lefty, you would do up, reverse these. I'm gonna ask her to come over here. I'm gonna lure her, put her in a sit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to make my hands look uniform and I'm gonna put them in, uh, on my knees. Now when she looks, she's gonna go where the smell is strongest. I, focus, I ignore that. I don't move my hand away, I don't disagree. Focus. I'm waiting for her to look at me in the face and I'm rewarding her after doing that. And I'm assigning the command word of focus right after the tree touches her lips. Focus. So what I'm doing is I'm imagining there's a string that's going right here. The first move that I make is to travel up to the string, string, and travel down it, focus, and say focus when it goes into her mouth. The idea is I want her to keep on looking at my face the whole time. If I hold the tree here or here or here, she's looking elsewhere. I want her looking right here. So I raise it between my eyes and hers, and I travel down, focus every time it goes in her mouth. Now first, it's just one second for each movement. One second, one second, focus. And a lot of people when they're doing this, they go like this, they go, They hold it here, and then they go, focus. So don't hold it up that top. You just take your turn and immediately go back to her. But you notice at first she was really licking at a spot on my leg from where she's licking me, but now she's looking at me faster and faster. She's not trying to nudge it. Focus, because there's a reward when she looks at me in the face. Now first one I'm doing, like I said, it's one second, one second. Focus. Eventually I wanna make it one second, eventually 20 seconds on the second movement. That's just too early for her to do that right away. We would do this in gradual stages. When I do this, I have about 10 to 15 treats. I'm gonna hold this to keep her attention. But I wanna have about 10 to 15 treats in, the, in my hand. Now immediately after you do it, tra transfer the treat. Do you wanna get her looking and refocused about this? Try not to move your hands around or fidget with your hands when you have the treat. You wanna, and don't talk. Be better, no one in the room should be eating food, at least initially. Uh, we want her to focus, and you see her focus now is really good. She's looking at my face. Uh, for dogs, looking at the face can be a challenge. Uh, sometimes when they're insecure, or, uh, and other times they won't look at us in the face. We want to basically be able to redirect her and get us to look in the face um, when other things are going on. The way we develop this is by practicing this at a time where there's nothing else going on. It's easy. And so, at first, uh, so now she's like staring at me. Once she gets to the point where, there we go, so now she's looking at the treat, I'm waiting for her eyes to come up to my face. Doesn't have to be eye contact, just facial contact. Come on, up. Let's do one more. Focus. That was a couple seconds on the second movement. It's okay now, but we want to eventually make it just one second, one second for all 15 treats. And I would have everybody in the family do it once a day with each dog for about a week to two week period of time. So um, if the dog really likes a kibble, you can use the kibble. She's not fat, but she's carrying a little extra weight. She can lose a little bit. And so it wouldn't be uh, inappropriate if the dog will respond to use kibble. Um, but if the if dog food isn't high enough value and the dog starts looking elsewhere, then you want to use something else. I like using tricky trainers. We're using uh, the chicken liver today, or the uh, salmon flavor today because she has an, an allergy with chicken. Chicken liver is my preferred because it has a strong aroma. And for dogs, the aroma is everything. So we do it with about 10 or 15 treats and all day long, everybody's doing this with all the dogs and do it in different rooms. So, I mean, we have multiple people in the house so we can do it in three different rooms and do that at the same time rather than you hear the dogs outside, two of them are, the knuckleheads are complaining because they want to be inside. So the idea is we want to do it in all sorts of different rooms in the house. Um, and at first, the first day or two, one second, one second. Then maybe the second day when you get to the point where the dog's just staring at you the whole time, then you go one second, two seconds on that second movement for all 15 treats. And each dog's gonna be different. So she, you might be like, she's at five seconds today, the other two dogs are at two seconds. Because they're younger, they don't have as much, uh, she's more mature. 
So the idea is we want to keep on doing this until we can say focus and go like this for 20 seconds. And the dog's not lurching for it, the dog's just waiting, staring at you for 20 seconds. Once you've achieved this, then when the dog starts getting excited or worked up about something, then we can give them the focus exercise uh, or give them the focus command and they're like, focus, who's got the treat for me? Oh yeah, I'll stare at you. So I'm ignoring whatever's going on over here. Dogs only focus on one thing at a time. For most dogs, the focus works against the human because the dog's focused on the squirrel or the mailman or something else. Well, we're gonna tap into that and use the focus to get them to focus on us. This is a great way to redirect your dog's attention. The best time to use this is before the dog gets worked up. The dog starts barking here and you say focus. Now they're all worked up, just like humans that get into an argument. If you catch people right at they start arguing like, can you believe what Donald Trump did? Hey guys, I don't wanna talk about politics. Okay, cool, they can leave it. But they're like, can you believe what Trump did? And somebody's like, yeah, I can't believe that. And they start arguing back and forth. Well, then now you come in and say, guys, let's stop arguing. Well, if he wants to continue supporting that guy for he does whatever that I don't like, they're invested in the conversation, it's hard. So just like us, it's easier for dogs if you can redirect them before they get too worked up. So if, let's say that the garbage truck is something that res the dogs respond to. Well, I know the garbage truck comes by every, every Wednesday between 10 and 11 in the morning. Well, if I have the ability to, I might rearrange my schedule so that I'm here during 10 or 11 and I'm waiting. And so maybe I have somebody outside and they send a text message to us when the garbage truck is like four houses away before the dogs can hear it. And then we start doing the focus exercise or we wait for the dog, like they're just kind of hanging out and they think, that's this garbage truck, focus. You can catch them early, you can redirect them. And then if you eventually get them doing the focus exercise the whole time while that garbage truck is passing, that's a great way to redirect their attention and stop them from reacting. Now this isn't necessarily gonna stop the barking. I'm gonna go through a counter conditioning technique with the guardians off camera. If you would like how to counter condition your dog, if you go to dognonproblems.com, click on the dog training tips page. Um, the page that loads will have a search box on the right side of the page. Type in counter conditioning. We usually do it as all as one word. There'll be a bunch of sessions that come up where dogs have been fearful of skateboards or other dogs or whatever it is. And we use counter conditioning to fix that problem. Uh, I invite you if your dog is reactive to uh, doorbells or door knocks or the garbage truck or anything specific that happens that triggers a response to your dog, counter conditioning is a great way to end it. This video, however, is about how we can teach our dog to focus.